The laments in life are gathered here in their frail humanness. Our grieving rises in the shadows of life called into our minds and hearts. We hear the echoes of the fading cheers for good and remember when our hands reached out to support the Christ. We look ahead and see the Lenten journey before us. O oh God, in this quiet place of prayer and humility before you, the tears of our regrets fall on the ashes of truth. We see the shadows and flickering light on the road and the hands of longing peoples reaching hopefully towards compassion and justice. We listen to the grief and the sighing of our planet as it groans and struggles for its life. And we hear in our mind's memories reminders of many missed moments for the announcing of prophetic truth when our courage and commitment failed us. And now, O oh God, as your church, our hearts weep when we remember the divine dreams and visions shining before us in Jesus the Christ. We remember our claiming of your name as the people of God and the many betrayals of the great hope to which we are called as your church in this day.
we look at the cross and the light of your life in all the world and our own claims of faithfulness to you, Jesus Christ. We acknowledge that this longing is often reduced to ashes and becomes a burnt sign of our lost aspirations. Listen to these words from Holy Scripture, beginning with Psalm 51, verses 1 through 17. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. From Matthew chapter 6. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying... Oops, sorry. Skipping ahead to verse 16. And whenever you fast... Do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And from Second Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ... Be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. 
C, now is the acceptable time. C, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found, may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, though great, through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and in dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. O oh, Jesus Christ, with the ashes of our burnt possibilities, we will discover your comfort in our mourning. If you are able, would you please stand and let us sing hymn number 301. I invite you to stay standing as we'll be making our way up to receive the ashes. Come now for those who wish to receive the mark of both hard truth and rich promise. I invite you to come forward for the anointing of ashes either on your forehead or on the back of your hand if you prefer.
In response to the word, as we share this time of grieving, let us affirm our faith together. We believe in a Christ who, even on the lonely way towards Jerusalem, holds us fast as we dare to enter and stay with our realities. Here, within the ashes of our lost hopes, the Holy Spirit will be found, inviting us again to a true encounter with our past and present and joining us as we face what has been and moving us toward a new day. Stay with us now as we leave this place, O Christ. Dwell deeply within our souls that we may try again to go with you toward whatever lies before us in costly life. In the gloomy places, the light of truth will be found. Go now with courage into that truth. And may our lives be touched by grace, that Christ never leaves us nor forsakes us, and the God who lights all life be known in all the earth as the one who loves us in our humble humanness. Amen. Go in peace.